Welcome to the third in my series of tutorials on Nina. In this one we're going to look at getting a target either from an image or a planetarium or a telescope and setting it up so that it's framed nicely. So I've loaded Nina and I'm going to load the profile that we created in the last video. And I'm now going to connect to my camera and the reason for that is it gives me information about the size of the chip. And when that's done, I'm going to connect to the telescope. Now, if you've done it properly, in the options under equipment, you've put the focal length of the telescope. And that'll be useful later on when we want to make sure what the size of our image frame will be. But for now, we need to decide what we want to image and there are a number of ways of doing it and we're going to be looking mostly at the sky atlas and the framing tabs. Now there are lots of different deep sky objects either stellar ones or things like nebulas and galaxies and there's lots of different ways of deciding what to choose and how to find out where it is. A lot of deep sky objects have a name um, for instance as the thing up there suggests, M31. And if I typed in M31 up here and then did return, it'll pick up a picture of the M31 galaxy or the Andromeda galaxy and it tells me where it is and where it's likely to be during the night. In other words, it's setting as um, dusk approaches and it's not a good target for this particular time. And time's an essential feature, and as is your location. For these systems to work accurately, you need to be sure that your location is correct and your time is correct, especially when slewing to an object. So in terms of time, I use a freebie utility called Dimension 4, which synchronizes my PC's time with the internet, and it will t tell me how well it's doing over time, and this is the history and you can see that my little computer drifts quite dramatically and sometimes it's correcting up to eight seconds between synchronizations. And that's because most PCs these days use cheap clocks and rely on the internet to synchronize them. So I can remove that for a second. The other is location and again under the options tab and general down here it has the site latitude and longitude and we can either refresh that by bringing it in from GPS or bring it in from the planetarium software. Let's go back to Sky Atlas and framing tabs here. The Sky Atlas tab tells you what the subject is, it gives you an idea of its altitude during the night and there's a couple of buttons at the side of here that will add the target to a sequence or pop it into the framing assistant so that you can more accurately decide what your composition is like or it will tell the telescope to slew to it. Now there are other ways of finding objects so this is when we know a particular object by name but that may not necessarily be the case. So for instance we might want to choose a selection of objects that are in a particular constellation. So for instance if I do constellation and in the drop down box, move down to say Ursa Major and then do search. A list of all the objects that appear in this constellation appear and you can decide which one you want to do. So for instance M81 here may be something that's nice and suitable. And again you can either add it to a sequence, set it to the framing assistant or slew. This particular tab does a very similar job to the basic functions of something like Astro Planner. And if you don't necessarily know what you want to image on a particular night, it's sometimes useful to find out exactly what's around. The other thing, with the existing time and location, it also knows what the moon illumination is. So that just gives you a reference as to what's likely to be the conditions. So what I'm going to do is just hit set for framing assistant. It will pick up automatically an image of the area. So I just have to wait for that to complete. When it's completed you often get a quite magnified view of the sky because it's 
displayed automatically as one-to-one. -one. So this little button here scales it so it fits within the image frame. And you can see the common galaxies in Ursa Major. There's the bowed, and then there's the one with the um, funny red bits coming out the side. And you can see superimposed over this is the camera frame. So you can see it's picked up the focal length and the pixel size and the pixel dimensions so it knows exactly what will be seen on the chip and you can move this about you can decide that that's a better composition and you can alter its angle maybe the other way and drag that to there and that will be the framing that will be used by the target this isn't the only way of bringing information in you can also, for instance, go to your planetarium or your telescope. So here's the Sky X. At the moment I'm parked. So let's just unpark for a second. And I can slew to a point. And whilst it's doing that, in the Find tab, I'm going to put in M13. So there's two points on the planetarium where the telescope is pointing in yellow and an object which I'm asking the planetarium to find, which is in red. If I minimize that, I can, for instance, bring in the coordinates from the telescope's current position, which, which will come in and update itself. Or alternatively, I can hit this button and get the coordinates from the planetarium. In other words, where you want to go rather than where you are. Again, I'm going to pause the video whilst it brings in an image off the web. So this is the image of where the telescope is pointing. And if I bring in this one, slightly different coordinates, it'll bring in M13. There are other options for the image source. You can use the Sky Atlas, which is the, the one built into Nina, which is much faster, and it simply gives outlines of the particular objects. And that's quite a handy way of doing it, nice and quick and easy. But the thing to watch out for is with a nebula with diffuse boundaries, what the boundary is in this type of catalogue may not necessarily be accurate, and you may wish to confirm that by looking at an actual image, either downloaded from NASA or the European Space Agency, or whatever. The other things here is file and cache. So if you've done a number of searches in the past, you can just pick up the search and just load it that way. Or a file. So for instance, if you've taken a picture in the past and you want to take some more pictures with the same framing, you can load the file. Say so load image, just any image, and when it loads it, it will plate solve it and display the contents on the screen. It says it needs to be solved, so you hit yes, and it'll bring up the image. And there we have it. It's a, an array of three galaxies. The other thing to note is that when you load a new target, the altitude information is shown during the imaging night. So you can see that it gets above my local horizon at about midnight and sets just before dawn. This is quite useful because you can plan your images and you can obviously, if you have another target that rises earlier, you can do that one first and then followed by this one. But we're not going to do that just now because we're getting ahead of ourselves. But we do need to take a look at some of the options that appear on this screen. One of which is the ability to create a mosaic. So at the moment, we only have a panel of one by one. If we were to create an image that is wider than our field of view, then we can see how the mosaic system works. So for instance, if I choose the sky atlas for speed and type in M31, and then when the little button underneath highlights to show that it's founded in the catalog, click that to populate the coordinates here, and then do load image, you'll see that our single capture frame is much smaller than the M31 circle here. So if I was to make it a 2x2 two two 
mosaic, you can see that, yes, it's bigger than the circle in some dimensions, but smaller than the others. And we know that M31 is an elliptical appearance. This is a case where this particular catalogue isn't the most useful for precise framing. And I sometimes find that this HIPS to FITS sky survey is a better catalogue for precise framing. And you can see now that we need to angle our camera so that it keeps the whole galaxy. And in fact, typically what you might end up doing is having it at a slight angle so you have a bit of a dynamic going across the diagonal and you have the other two galaxies. And then that might be the framing that we pass on to the system. Let's just remove the mosaic for the moment because that's more of a specialist case. And let's just consider a single simple frame and look at the four buttons under here. We've got recenter image. So for instance, if I was to move the frame down here and hit recenter image, then a new deep sky survey picture will come up centered on the middle of my frame. This button here, rather than taking the angle from a slider, it will automatically take an image from the camera, work out its angle by using plate solving, and then change this to match. These two buttons on the right hand side have several options indicated by the drop down arrows. So the default is the one that you can see right now and other options appear when you click the arrow. So in this case, you can slew, slew and center or slew, center and rotate your telescope to your object. And this depends on whether you've got plate soldering running on your system or whether you have either a manual or a mechanized rotator and you can choose which one that you want. And the button underneath is perhaps the most important of all. This button here, add target to sequence, has many guises. The drop down list shows you the three main categories. You can add target to sequence. This creates a sequence and adds the target and framing information to it. The one beneath, add target to target list, basically stores the target and framing information so that it can be recorded at a later stage. And the last one, if you already have a sequence with a target loaded, but the actual framing isn't quite right, say, this will update the framing and target information and allows you to carry on using the same sequence. The first one has a number of options in its own right. And if we click on it, we can see that it'll either create a simple sequence called the simple sequencer, or it'll create a more complicated sequencer based on templates. And here it shows the templates that are available. And there's one that's built into the system when you load it. And these are ones that I've created. And these templates are the enabler for creating complicated sets of instructions for imaging under various conditions and with various bits of equipment, including observatories. And they have the unique ability to store templates which have the structure of all these instructions which can then be modified by simply adding target information or slightly modifying the exposures that are required. And these will be the subject of several follow-on videos. But for now, we're going to just simply do the simple sequencer and see what happens. So it creates in the sequencer tab a sequence for this particular target and it creates one exposure event which has one iteration one second and no filter. And this is the starting point for creating a simple imaging sequence. And this will be the subject of the next video. Thanks for watching.